Hello, welcome to episode 54 of Stitched in Sweden. I'm Maria, and you can find me on Ravelry as M. Monska and um, on Instagram as Stitched in Sweden. Sometimes there's show notes and sometimes there's not, but you can go over to the blog, which is stitchedinsweden.blogspot.com and check for notes there. Otherwise, you can head over to the Ravelry group, also called Stitched in Sweden, and if you have any questions about something in the episode, I will be happy to answer them. So today I thought I would jump in and record a podcast. It's a beautiful fall Sunday afternoon, and uh, it seems that everything has changed this week in terms of weather, and the leaves are changing colors, and the temperature has dropped quite a bit. Um, and with that, I have started to want to knit all of the things again. So I have a bit to share, um, things that I'm working on currently, and then also a couple of things which will be upcoming. And a little bit of sewing as well, but not as much this week. So I thought I would start out with um, what I've been knitting on this week. Something you have already seen before is the Ramble Shawl. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, Drea Rene Knits on, yeah, Ravelry. And it's growing. Here it is. Uh, it's quite a large shawl at this point, or it's getting larger. It's it's kind of long because it's, yeah, asymmetrical uh, shape. So my hand up here is pretty much at the end, and then um, I'm working now on the brioche part, which has caused me a bit of a headache um, in the past couple days. I I enjoy knitting it, definitely, and I think the effect is really cool. I had knit maybe three quarters of this and realized that I had gotten off so that the pattern was no longer making this cool chevron sort of knit stitch looking thing. So I had to rip back, but because I... I... yeah. I'm new to brioche knitting, I would say, but I think it's kind of funny when people say that they're like, they don't know how to do brioche because it's just a type of stitch like anything else. So it's like if you said you don't know how to do ribbing, but then you figure it out and it's Knit One Pro One. It's sort of, it's slightly different than that just because, yeah, there's a little bit more going on, but um, yeah, whatever. The main thing is that I'm not quite sure how to fix mistakes as easily. Uh, it's different for fixing mistakes in brioche stitch than in plain stockinette or purling or something like that. So I had a bit of a difficult time to correct my mistake and ended up having to like just unknit a bunch of rows. So maybe this far or something um, rather than what I would normally do with plain knitting would be to pull out my needles and rip the yarn back to that point and then pick up all the stitches again, but I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to do that with how um, brioche works. So I guess once I maybe have a little more experience I could do that, but not for now. So as you can see I have moved on to the third color I guess it is. Um, here's the back side in case you're interested. And I am knitting this out of Quince & Company um, in two different weights and three different colors. The blue is Quince & Company Finch in, I think it's called Bird Egg, Bird's Egg or Robin's Egg, I'm not sure, I don't have the tag anymore. Um, and the white is Egret and the lighter blue in the stripes is um, Frost. So that is going to go back there. I have my table, my kitchen table, here in the living room today because we had Thomas's parents over for dinner last night and I haven't moved the table back into the kitchen. But it makes a convenient spot for my projects. So 
that is what I have knit this week. Another thing, well, I've been gone for a couple of weeks now, also because school picked up quite a bit. But another thing that I have been working on is a new design, actually. And this project is um, kind of one that just came to me and I thought it would be fun, so I just cast on and basically knit the whole thing in a week. And then um, it sat around for a couple of days to get the finishing touches. Actually, it's still not finished, but it's close. And I have the whole pattern pretty much written out. Um, so I will soon be looking for some people who might want to test knit some different sizes. And this is a little baby sweater, or child sweater. Um, and I won't share the name of it yet, but basically it's just a simple little sweater. It's in fingering weight yarn, and it has a secret pocket on the front, which this one is hot pink. And it will have another pocket here, which I haven't put in yet. Um, but I knit this out of the Yaku 416 fingering weight um, in black and white. And um, I'm planning on knitting another one. This is a one year old, one to two year old size, I would say. I need to still block it and measure it in the end. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it will have buttons on it. I haven't blocked this at all, so it's still like a little curly. But there's some buttonholes on this side, and I need to pick out some buttons for the other side. Uh, but I'm really pleased with how that turned out. So I will be knitting another one in a medium light gray with black stripes and then I'm planning on having a bright turquoise for the pocket. So that is another project I've been working on. Um, in terms of, of knitting, that's it that I did this week and the last couple of weeks. I knit a lot of that sweater in class two weeks ago and the uh, ramble shawl, it just has been taking longer than most projects, I guess, or most shawl projects would take me because I did have to knit back quite a bit and that took a lot of time. And it was also a little bit, a little, it took a little while before I noticed my mistake so I had continued to knit past the mistake for a while. So it just ended up being a bit of a time waste. I haven't knit any more on my Rock Island shawl, but I think once I finish the Ramble shawl, I'll start working on the Rock Island again. But in general, I need to concentrate a little bit more on both of those shawls. Um, and yeah, so far, I, or lately I've just been working on the Ramble and I have a bit more time and space to knit on something a little bit more complicated. For sewing this week, I did finish one bra. I, I didn't work anymore on my quilt, but I really do want to do that soon. So maybe I'll put that as a goal for this week. Um, I have some things, I some other garments I would like to sew as well. Um, but I did finish the Boylston bra, which is a pattern from orange lingerie and I think I showed you a bit of this in progress last time. This is similar to the other pattern that I've been using from her which is the Marlboro pattern but this one has uh, a solid upper cup with there's just holding bras is hard. <laughs> um, there is one seam here and one seam here it's just part way down. This the lower cup is split, and on the Marlboro the seam the side seam is like here instead. I really like how this one turned out. I'm happy with the colors and the lace and everything, and um, I'm really happy with the fit. Also, 
Um, so, not too much more to say on that. Uh, the back is this stretch power knit. Uh, sometimes I put lace on the back part as well, and sometimes I don't. It kind of just depends. But I did change the straps for this one. Uh, the Boylston bra is more of a falconet style, and so the straps are pretty much, yeah, far out to the side. And I think I mentioned last time that I had made this pattern. I made a black bra out of this, and the straps were a little bit irritating in my, yeah, armpit kind of. So I had sort of redrafted the pattern a little bit to move the strap towards the center a little bit more, and it turned out to still be too far over, so after the whole thing was finished, I kind of had to rip back this um, elastic part here and move it over and kind of Frankenstein raw it together, but it worked and now it's wearable and I wear it all the time so that is the goal I guess. Um, this lace came from Mint Frog on Etsy and she has a lot of really nice lace fabrics there. Before I talk a little bit more about some upcoming projects for knitting I will uh, stay with sewing for a second and uh, I wanted to share with you a new to me Etsy shop um, who sells really nice um, lingerie kits especially for she I don't think she has any underwire bra patterns but she has some soft bra patterns and then underwear um, and this is the Evie La Louve uh, lingerie sewing patterns and I ordered this one which is the Esme panty and I have not made it yet but I am hoping to soon so I ordered this as part of a kit and came with some it was all nicely folded and stuff. Now I've cut it up a little bit. Um, but this nice uh, gray stretch jersey and this really pretty gray lace fabric and I ordered a little bit of extra of the gray lace so that I could make a matching set. Um, but I think it's yeah going to be really nice. And it also came with some fold over elastic and a little bow as well. Um, I ordered some other fabrics from her to make some sets of bra and underwear sets with some of the bras that I've already made that I have a little bit of lace left over and then planning for some new ones as well. So I'll show you here. This is in my iPad box, but um, there's just a couple of different jersey fabrics here and um, just like a ivory cream. This nice purple heathered one, a navy blue, a floral, coral, and then these are actually um, like lining fabrics. Same with these. So she has really nice fabrics. Oh, and also this uh, black velvet one, which I think will be really nice as well. Um, but she has a YouTube channel as well if you haven't sewn lingerie before or um, like I've never sewn underwear so I checked out her YouTube channel and she has a lot of tutorials for the different patterns that she sells on her Etsy shop and um, I, I just watched the one for the Esme um, and yeah it seems really clear step by step so um, I would definitely recommend checking out her shop it's on Etsy and she is offering Stitched in Sweden viewers 15% off for a week so you can get 15% off in her shop 
um, by using the code which I will have running on the screen now so that you can go over there and check it out. Um, she has a lot of nice patterns for underwear and bras, like I said. She also has some sleeping masks and um, I think some kind of like pajama shorts as well. She has a really nice selection, so I worked with her to, um, I, I really wanted just some uh, fabrics which could work with some of the lace that I already had, so she um, took some pictures of some fabric that she had that wasn't posted and um, set up a custom order for me, which was perfect and exactly what I was looking for. So I'm looking forward to testing out some underwear. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so definitely go check out her shop if you are interested. Okay, so now for upcoming plans for knitting. Um, I have a couple of things that are upcoming. Besides making another one of the, um, one of my new design cardigan, I have a name for it, but I just am not ready to share it yet. Um, so I'm planning on making another one of those and finishing the one that I just showed you. Uh, but besides that, I'm also planning a couple of other sweaters. First, I ordered some yarn for a sweater for Thomas. I have made him one other sweater, which was the Timberline sweater that's a worsted weight cabled cardigan from... Um, Brooklyn Tweed and he I think I made that for him I want to say it was two winters ago uh, but I'm not sure and he wears that a lot during the winter uh, and I thought it would be nice to make him something make him a new sweater because yeah anyway I ordered some of this yarn this is the first time I have um, seen this yarn. I've seen some other people use it, but I've never felt it for myself. This is the Ulysses, which is 185 meters per 50 grams, so it's slightly heavier than a fingering weight, um, but maybe not quite a sport weight. I would say it's pretty thin, like it's pretty much fingering weight, but it's a woven spun yarn, so it is woven? No woolen. I'm thinking like woven fabric from, yeah. It's a woolen spun yarn, so it has quite a bit of uh, loft and air in it, and it feels really squishy. Um, and I picked a woven spun because I, um, I need quite a bit of yarn for Thomas's sweaters. And I think if I picked a more tightly spun worsted spun yarn, uh, the sweater itself might just get too heavy and stretch out of proportion, so I thought um, this could be nice. And this yarn is from Durerum Natura, which is a French company. It's made in France, and it says in French that it respects the sheep and the people. And it's made from... Um, Uh, merinos in the Southern Alps and merinos, merino sheep from Provence and from the valley of somewhere in Portugal. This color is Lagoon and it's one of her newer colors, I believe, based on her Instagram feed. Uh, she also sent me a little... sample of her, um, I think this is the worsted weight, and it's in this nice uh, charcoal gray, and this is definitely has a lot more plies to it. I think it has four plies, maybe three, I think it has four, um, and this one, it, this lagoon is uh, two ply. She also sent me a little color card, which I seem to have misplaced at the moment, but um, I asked her if she sold color cards and she said no, but um, 
I told her the ones I was particularly interested to see and she put them just on a little business card which was perfect. So I think I will definitely order some. Well, okay, maybe I should knit this up first and see if I like it. But it's really soft and it has a similar quality to it as the Brooklyn Tweed Loft. But it is um, with merino sheep wool and it's significantly softer I would say. Um, and for me, the Brooklyn Tweed Loft is perfectly fine. It doesn't itch me, but I know for Thomas he is a bit more sensitive, and so I thought this one would be better. So I have, all this is to say that I have nine balls of this. Yes. I have nine balls of the Lagoon, and... It's actually a bit more green, greenish blue than it comes out. I think it's a really pretty color and it will match his eyes perfectly. And I'm going to make the Redford, which is a sweater by Julie Hoover, but it was published in Brooklyn Tweed. And here it is. I'm not sure yet if I will do these side seam things. Thomas can be a little bit picky when it comes to that kind of thing, so I will have to ask him. But it has a little um, V detail, which you can't see in any of the pictures here because, yeah. But anyway, I think it will just be a nice sweater that he can wear over shirts. And um, he said that he... Uh, he said that he wanted a fingering weight sweater, uh, something that was just lighter, because he does wear the um, Timberline one, which, like I said, was worsted weight. He does wear that one a lot, but it's pretty. It's a pretty thick and heavy sweater because it's heavily cabled and it's with a thick yarn. I made it with Cascade 220, which is a worsted weight. Now I've said that about a million times. Um, so I thought that it would be nice to have something else, a pullover that's lighter weight um, but still warm. So that is one upcoming project that will be happening soon. The other project that I'm thinking about knitting, now when I hold these together. Yeah, this one is definitely softer. This is some Brooklyn Tweed Loft that I have. Um, but you can see they both have kind of like a fluffy, wooly um, character to them, I guess. And this is Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the Foothills color. And my parents gave me this yarn for Christmas last year, I think. And they also gave me the Wellwood pattern. So I'm thinking that I might start that soon. I really like the Wellwood. Oh, so I might just, now when I'm looking at it again, I'm like, yeah, I should just knit that one. Um, but another thing that crossed my mind, which would be suitable for that yarn and look really nice, I think, is a pattern in the Making uh, Flora magazine. This is the Making magazine. If you want to get the second one, which the first one is all sold out now, this one is all sold out. But Fauna, which is episode episode two, uh, issue two, I guess. Whatever, number two. The pre-orders have just gone up, so I would run over there and get it if I were you. This is a beautifully produced magazine, and I would like to subscribe to it, but the subscriptions are not open. I thought this would be a really beautiful, simple cardigan that could also work really well with this yarn. And although in... Although this yarn, um, this is called the Silver Leaf Cardigan, and it's a pattern by Hannah Fettig. Uh, the yarn for that cardigan, I believe, I saw is worsted weight. 
Yeah, it's a uh, Cotton Comfort by Green Mountain Spinnery. 80% wool, 20% cotton. 50 grams is 180 yards, and this is 50 grams is 275 yards. So I think that that's more of a worsted weight. But, of course, with a little math, I could make that work as well. So I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit, and I'm not sure yet which one I'm going to knit. I think um, for now I will uh, work on writing up the pattern for the baby sweater, and if you are interested in being a test knitter for that, I will have a couple of different sizes, so um, I'm sure I'll put out a post on Instagram and um, see who wants to knit it. So I think that's it for this week. It felt like I had a lot to say, but I guess I did it pretty quickly. Be sure to head over to Evie La Louve, Louve, um shop on Etsy and use our 15% off coupon. And I also remembered that we have a giveaway for the Tea Time socks. Um, and I would love it if you could go over to the Ravelry group and you can enter to win the giveaway in a thread that will be posted there. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.